And there's a radio show that we talk about all the time here, a conservative one. It's uh, the Faith and Freedom broadcast by Matt Barber and Matt Staver. These are some of the most conservative Christian guys in the country. They're right up there with the John Higgies and the Pat Robertsons and the Jerry Falwells when he was alive. Uh, and they're incredibly dogmatic. They believe the Bible is literally true, and they're demeaning to anybody who doesn't believe exactly as they do, which I always found weird that anybody could look at any religion and be dogmatic about it. Like, I get it if you believe it, and, you know, you largely don't talk about it because you don't want to be pressed on it because it's your faith. It's not based on facts. It's based on faith. But no, these guys are like, I believe this, and it is factual, even though it's not, and I'm going to be arrogant about it. It's like the last thing you should ever be arrogant about because there's so little to back up believing in any holy book from any civilization throughout any time in history. Well, there's this theory that I've had for a very long time. You guys know this. I've actually gotten some – some uh, liberals hate when I talk about this. I, I don't know why. Maybe they want to hold hands and sing Kumbaya and you know look at rainbows all day and everybody gets a puppy in there. Oh, don't attack them that much. Too mean of you. <laughs> Too speculative for you to say that. But I never backed away from it. And what I'm talking about is I always r realized that whenever it comes to the guys who are the most vehemently anti-gay and they rub it in people's faces and they'll judge you if you're gay and they'll scream about it and they'll – at the same time they do that, they'll also be saying, well, being gay is a choice, which led me to the conclusion that, well, that means that that guy's gay. And then, of course, I always had that suspicion, but then came out – there were two studies that came out originally, and then there was a third one that came out recently. They all said the same thing, that it's true that by and large, a very good indicator of somebody's sexuality is uh, what they – what their outward projection is of, of their beliefs. And what they said is people who are – who came from a Christian household, you know, like a fundamentalist household – and they're vehemently anti-gay and very vocal about it. If you have those two things mixed together, it is much more likely that that person is actually a closeted gay person who's trying to overcompensate. And I always give uh, the example of, you know, somebody uh, – like I, I've had friends where their girlfriend would break up with them, and then anybody who brings it up – I would never bring it up because I know it would be a sour topic, but other people would bring it up around them, and they'd say, oh, hey, hey dude, you know, what happened with uh, Kimberly? Is everything all right or, you know – you okay? You want to go out or whatever? And the guy's like, oh, no, I don't, I don't even care, bro. I was going to break up with her tomorrow anyway. I mean, she just got to it a little bit before I did. I was planning on it a long time ago. I don't even care. <laughs> you thought, <laughs> I never even, whatever, man. It's only like a year and a half we were together. That's nothing. <laughs> and you realize, of course that guy cares. You get a couple drinks in him later at night. He's crying in the corner looking for your shoulder. Okay? Because he's overcompensating. I believe this. Oh, really? That, why, is that why you're screaming it over and over? Is that why? It's a sign of insecurity. Well, I'm telling you this whole long thing to get to this point. An article on Right Wing Watch today. Matt Staver fears everyone will go gay under marriage equality. Yahtzee. That's what we've been talking about all along. So these guys, it, here's the thing. If you actually believe that there's, you know, this God who thinks homosexuality is immoral and he'll punish you if you do it, and if you also think being gay is a choice, okay, then in his mind, this is his reasoning. And it, it's explained, right? His reasoning is, well, obviously, if you give people the option between blowing Sean and marrying him or marrying Jennifer, ugh, nag, nag all day long, and I don't even like a vagina. A vagina bleeds every month. That's disgusting. I don't want that. That's nasty. So if that's his thought process, well, if I have the choice, obviously I'm going to go with Sean all day long, not even a question. So you can't give people the choice because then society will crumble because everybody will pick Sean. Why is he saying this? Because that's how he thinks. He's the, he would pick Sean. He would pick the guy, and it's a no-brainer to him. So he projects that on everybody else. Well, obviously if I'm into dudes and maybe even into girls too, we might be bisexual, not just gay. Well, if I have the choice, I'm obviously going to pick the guy, so everybody's going to pick the guy. So that means everybody's going to get gay married if you allow gay marriage. And then everybody's going to go to hell because there's this God that's going to judge us and we're not allowed to do that. Which is why you need to keep it illegal and you need to keep it, you know, and you need to keep saying it's immoral. <laughs> it's so funny how when they, he thinks he's being intellectual, he thinks he's nailing it when he makes these arguments, when he makes these points. Not even close, dude. Not even close. If any, he's proving our point for us every time he talks. He's proving that he has 
same-sex attraction, and it, he's proving that he thinks that there's this God which there's no evidence for to begin with. So on multiple counts, Matt Staver, epic fail.